Hello and welcome to episode 63. You're here with Physique Development and today we are talking about calorie calculators. So where I'm actually going to open up the floor here early to start, uh, here to Sue first and have her kind of mention any, any mistake that comes to mind when, you know, thinking about calorie calculators, you know, what is that mistake or multiple mistakes that people make? Yeah, I think that one thing within calorie calculators or just equations in general is that the human bodies are these dynamic systems. They are not just equations and we're not just machines of input and output. And so being able to take the whole human into account is going to be a large aspect that's kind of sidestepped within just looking at an equation. Another thing here is going to be user error. When it comes to these nutrition calculators, you're having to self-report a lot of information. And oftentimes we, again, report wrong. So when we're looking at activity levels, if you have a sedentary job and you train four or five times a week, you are not a very active person. Even though you do have a good amount of activity, when we're looking at these uh, calculators, when they say very active, that's looking at someone who is, again, very active. That doesn't mean that you're not active. We're just going to be able to make sure we report things correctly based on truly what your activity levels are. And if you don't wear some kind of tracker of a watch or a ring or whatever it may be, then that's something that you might not even know how truly active you are or aren't. So again, that user error of reporting as well as your intake level, because people do often under think that they are eating more and or less than they are actually eating. So that's another thing within reporting that you can kind of get that wrong as a whole. Another thing within calorie calculators is that people will just go for the largest deficit without taking into account their consistency, but I know that we'll be diving into that a little bit more. Um, and then another thing is not counting for adaptation. Because human metabolism is not static, as well as just depending on your background, that is going to largely depend on what your adaptations are as a human being and what your calorie changes, what your maintenance is. All of that is all going to be an aspect. So again, when we're looking at these equations, they can be so helpful and so insightful, but we do want to make sure that we understand the information that's going into it, which is what this episode is mostly about. So um, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Alex of what your thoughts are on some different things when it comes to calorie calculators um, of what all you feel is wrong with them. <laughs> yeah. So within the the calorie counters in general or the uh, equations that you would be utilizing, the main thing to do here is to not live and die by what is being produced or what the number is that comes out. I think that individuals, as soon as they run these equations, understanding and, and what Sue talked about with the dynamic nature of the human metabolism as a whole, you don't want to put yourself in this box of like, okay, I input these five or six things that the equation has asked for, the calculator has asked for, and then uh, have that number be spit out and then listen to nothing else within your biofeedback and how you're feeling from a day-to-day -day perspective, all those things not taken into consideration. So you want to to take these calculations and gather data. This is just a, a way for us to get closer to whatever is going to be best for you in general. So you're going to use this as a, a kind of a, a baseline of this is where the intake is at. And I've got data collected over, let's say seven days or maybe 14 days. I want to look at how my weight trended, what my energy was like throughout with that intake in place. How is my training performance? How is my sleep? How is my stress? All these things that we would be looking at within our, our client check-ins. And you want to analyze those things. And then from there, make adjustments to that intake. Maybe you need a little bit more food. Maybe your energy was down and those different factors. Maybe you were a little bit more irritable. Those different aspects to find what's going to be the best suit for you. So that you want to use this as kind of a starting point. And I like the, the nutrition calculators as a whole. I, I understand that they get a really bad rap because you may use one nutrition calculator and then you use another one and the numbers are different in those different aspects. But especially when, when I was first starting, I didn't have the the money for a coach. And as I was trying to learn and, and figure things out, it was a good baseline for me. I understood that it was like, 
Is there better options? Of course, working with an expert who is going to potentially be five, $600 a month or something along those lines is going to be a better way for me to reach my goals. But at the time, I did not have the finances to do so. Thus, utilizing the nutrition calculator was a great option for me to get an understanding and learn for more for me. I think that the big thing when you're working with a one-on-one -on -one coach that has a lot of expertise, you put yourself in a situation where they've gone through the crap for you. They've uh, made the mistakes and then they are basically saving you from making the same mistakes. Whereas with the nutrition calculator puts you in a scenario where you are like, you're trudging through the mud yourself. So I think it can be a useful tool. It's just context dependent on your scenario and those different things. Yeah. And I think another thing here is just what you talked about with inconsistency of if you go ahead and you do the number that was spit out to you and you don't get the desired results that you wanted from hitting that number, being able to take into consideration exactly like Alex said, all those different variables. And if you listen to episode 61, we kind of talk about when you should adjust macros um, after you've possibly hit a plateau or different things to take into consideration and things that we take into consideration when looking at our client check-in. So definitely go listen to episode 61 to get a little bit of insight as far as, all right, if I am going to take this number, what other metrics do I need to be aware of? Because if you just take that number and think, because I did this calorie calculator and now I have this number, regardless of if I hit it or not, or if I'm paying attention to my sleep or anything else, I should lose weight. Because you're putting yourself in a diet mentality without possibly being in an actual diet if that is your goal. That is something that is commonly people's goals, the reason why I say dieting, but truly being able to take inventory of these different variables, not only going into the equation, but what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis within the end number that you got. Are you actually hitting that number? What does it look like for the quality of foods that you're having? How consistent? And then those other biofeedback markers as a whole. So I very much so agree with Alex that they can be a very, very great tool. And just like Alex with having a coach, it can quiet that noise. Whereas now that you have this calorie calculator, you have to be aware there's a lot of noise that you do have to trudge through and you have to figure out, okay, what does this look like? And how can I use this to get the most information from it? Bingo. So the point, you know, I think the big things we want to want you guys to take from that is like, this is a starting point for you, right? And it helps reduce the noise, as Sue just said, right? Because if you go into this completely blind and you're just like, I don't know, you know, I've heard 2000 calories a day is a, is a normal what things are based off of. Like that's a normal human uh, calorie amount that we decided on at some point, you know, for reasons beyond my intellect at the moment. So, you know, I don't really know why we chose 2000, but like, hey, if that's the only number you've ever heard, that may be what you're aiming for, you know, without knowing much else. But what a calculator can do is get you within the ballpark of, hey, based off of, you know, a few questions, based off of, you know, things we understand about, you know, the laws of th thermodynamics, general physiology, metabolism, these should be relatively close, right? And what you do thereafter and how you, you know, alter those numbers or manipulate those numbers or goals based off of things you're doing and the goals that you may have is kind of where the next step comes, right? So understanding this is just a tool and this is going to allow us to be in a ballpark of where we generally need to be close, right? And that's as far as this goes. And when you do multiple calculators too, you're gonna get multiple answers, right? That's a normal thing. So I just wanna kinda like get that out of the way. That's a normal thing. And what we do know is that, you know, the whole reason we use these calculators, right, again, is to get this general number. And we understand there's no single, you know, single best diet for everyone or anyone. Therefore, your intake should vary based off the individual requirements that you have, right? Based off of you as an individual in your life and things that you're currently doing, you know? So that's the main goal here. And your total daily energy balance, right? Which is what we're kind of trying to calculate and generalize here refers to that relationship between the amount of energy that you consume and the amount of energy that you utilize for energy to go about your day right, to fuel activities such as weight training, strength training, cleaning your house, wrestling your kids into clothes in the morning, um, whatever you spend your, your days doing, 
right? This is often referred to as this energy balance equation as calories in versus calories out, right? And we're not here to debate the relevancy of this physiological phenomenon here, but we are here to educate you on kind of the general things that we're looking for uh, and kind of the, the back end nature of what goes into an, a calorie calculator so we can then, you know, make sense of it, of understa better understanding why the numbers are what they are and how we start to manipulate those, right? So it is summertime. And with summer comes vacations and needing to look like a smoke show at the beach. And that is probably you and wanting to get in the best shape of your life. With Physique Development, our one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to do that for you. So head over to physiquedevelopment.com and inquire to work with one of our coaches. Calories in versus calories out is a little bit more complex than, again, simply thinking about food that we consume and the energy that we use through exercise, right? This equation takes into account our, ent our entire internal system as a whole, right? So... But on the base level, calories in versus calories out, right? So when you consume more calories than you expend, you're in a surplus energy balance. We've heard that on Instagram 1 million times, okay? When, and we've heard this one even more. When you consume fewer calories than you expend, you're in a deficit energy balance. You're in a caloric deficit, right? And if there is a meme of the century within the fitness industry, it is calorie deficit. Right. Yes. And I think it's a great message, but let's go a little bit deeper into some things of, of specific to the calorie calculator and creating a deficit. Right. And, and what that all, what all that means. Right. So if we look at calories in, this is the amount of energy you consume via food or beverage each day. Right. We track this via calories made up of protein, carbs, and fats. Those are our macros. The number of calories you intake will have a direct impact on your ability to gain, lose, or maintain your body weight, right? So your calories you're taking in versus burning will have an impact on if you, your ability to gain, lose, or maintain your body weight. Calories out, right? That was calories in. So calories out involves understanding your total daily energy expenditure. And that is the biggest number, the biggest answer to the equation that the nutrition calculator is sort of spitting out for you, right? that total daily energy expenditure number, right? And that gives, that helps us give us, you know, what even is our caloric maintenance, you know, generally, okay? And the three components that this nutrition calculator is taking into uh, consideration and what make up your total daily energy expenditure in general are things like basal metabolic rate, right? Your BMR. And I'll, I'll, I'll define some of these terms for you here in a minute, but Basal metabolic rate is the first thing, right? Your BMR. The thermic effect of food is the second thing, the TEF. A lot of acronyms in this episode. And physical activity, right? Those are the three components that make up your daily energy expenditure. Basal metabolic rate is essentially that number of calories your body uses at rest to function properly, right? This is often referred to as like, if you were like in this comatose state, lying on your couch near dead, you <laughs> know, like, what does it take for your body just to run and stay alive? BMR, nailed it, right? That's your BMR. Your non-exercise related activity is NEAT, right? Non-exercise related activity thermogenesis is NEAT, right? We just kind of say non-exercise related activity. It's an easier way to say it. And thermogenesis is just too big of a word to say that many times. So that is the calories the body uses for energy on tasks like walking, cleaning, fidgeting, cooking, wrestling your kids into clothes like we already talked about, you name it, right? It's that non-exercise related activity. And that is going to be a big player in this equation. And we're going to go over that here in a minute. Thermic effect of food, right, is the number of calories the body uses to digest the proteins, carbs, and fats that we consume. Easy enough. Exercise activity, right? This is like dedicated exercise, dedicated physical activity is the amount of energy used during planned exercise, like aerobic or strength training, right? So the non-exercise related activity and the exercise related activity sort of fall into a, a blanket under that physical activity component of TDEE, okay? Your BMR and your TEF, your basal metabolic rate and the thermic effect of food are relatively fixed numbers, right? They're fixed amounts within that TDEE variance. Right? We can't do much to sway those 
numbers. Not much, right? We could maybe move the needle tiny, a tiny bit, but we're not going to get in, into the weeds there, right? Those are relatively fixed amounts in terms of that total daily energy expenditure, which basically leaves us physical activity in terms of a lever that we can pull on a daily basis to help us calorically with that caloric output, right? The calories out part of that calories in, calories out equation. And physical activity, again, is made up from the exercise-related activity and the non-exercise-related activity, right? To adjust that TDEE number, right? And this, and Sue's going to go over this in here in a little bit, where this is where adapt not only adaptation, but this is where movement in general can really start to impact that number that you get from this calorie calculator equation, okay? So I'll quickly go over the impact of NEAT here. And, and I know Sue's going to mention it with the adaptation part later, but NEAT has been sh shown to be responsible for up to six, six to 10% of your daily energy expenditure among sedentary individuals, right? Sue kind of went over the kind of defining sedentary individuals in the beginning, but people that just aren't moving a lot, right? People with desk jobs, honestly, in a big way, a lot of us fall, you know, if you're a personal trainer and mainly online, you fall into the blanket of you're probably pretty, pretty sedentary. You spend a lot of hours at the desk, right? So for us, that is closer to six to 10% of our daily energy expenditure is that non-exercise related activity. But for more active people, that can be upwards of 50% of that number, right? 50%, which is a great thing to know when it comes to losing or even maintaining weight and body composition right? Because we can really start to pull a lever there and say, hey, we want to greater impact the calories out part of this equation. How do we do that? Well, that's where things like steps come in, right? That's where things like maybe some structured cardio or um, not being a couch potato all day, right? <laughs> Actually go to this store and, and walk around the aisles if you don't get many steps in the day, right? There's things that we can do, levers that we can pull there. And NEAT is definitely a big one, okay? All right, so that was some nerdy stuff, as we like to say. So we're gonna we're gonna sort of come out of this nerdy stuff and uh, go into the the calculator and kind of what the calculator is going to uh, calculate and what it's kind of going to use here. But I actually first want to open up the floor and just see if these guys have anything to add to what we kind of just went over. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would add here is within talking about these metrics here of the BMR, the TEF, and then physical activity, which can break into exercise versus non-exercise um, activity, a few other things that are going to affect that out of the calories in versus calories out are going to be your hormonal hormonal health. Um, if you have chronically dieted or chronically been in a deficit in general, your digestive health, your sleep, as well as for females, if you have a menstrual cycle, these are all aspects that do impact that out. We're not going to get deep into the weeds of each of these. Maybe we do kind of do a follow-up episode um, and go deeper into the weeds with that. But it is something that I did just want to vocalize of, hey, if you know for a fact that these metrics are ones that you struggle with or are aware of, then that's also going to go into that out aspect as a whole. Yeah. And the two things that I wanted to add um, were more experience-based. So the the first thing is that throughout my first preps and, and Austin and I um, – we were, we've talked about this a number of times on the podcast, very active from a uh, school standpoint. We were doing crazy stuff in the morning. We'd work throughout the evening. And so my intake for those preps was excessively high. Like if I, I if I went back in the log books and told <laughs> you what my food was two weeks out, a week out um, at the lowest, you would be shocked. It was, it was high. And, and once I transitioned out of the working three jobs and going to school full time, once I transitioned into my most recent but distant prep, <laughs> <laughs> when Sue and I got married, I was just online coaching. And I can promise you, the intake that I was having at uh, two weeks out was very, very different than what I was intaking um, for the, the prep when I was doing all the crazy stuff. And the whole reason for that is that my NEAT was at a completely different level as a whole. 
And that played a huge role. And that was a lot for me to kind of take in as well, because I was like, damn, dude, I have dieted on a lot higher calories than this. And in my opinion, gotten leaner in those different aspects. That's a whole different topic, but <laughs> that, you know, happened there. And then the, uh, the second, uh, like, uh, the second experience I wanted to share with you is we work with a lot of nurses. And so the level of neat that some of these nurses are having 17, 20,000 steps a day and in very high calorie deficits, only taking in 12, 1400 calories, not understanding the activity that they're taking in is far exceeding just the, the intake that they're uh, intaking as a whole. And so it's something that I think going through these different metrics, I think outline things to better understand, okay, this is all of the things that are going into account of my caloric intake. And after you listen to this, maybe you're like, I should probably bring up my calories, maybe five, 600 calories. I know that sounds crazy, but for some people that really may be the truth. And you raise that up and all of a sudden you start to see fat loss really happen. You start to see your energy improve, your sleep, your mood, all these different things. So take these things in cons into consideration when you are structuring your own nutrition or utilizing the uh, nutrition calculators that we're speaking on today. Yeah. Great points by you both. And I, I think just kind of the, to, to, to bookend that part of this discussion here, right? The nerdy stuff really was there to kind of just educate you on this is what goes into not only metabolism, but this is what goes into that equation, right? This is what's in that equation to spit out these numbers, right? Because when we go to these nutrition calculators, we don't see these equations at work, right? Back in the day, I remember when Alex and I first started, they're really, I mean, there was definitely some you know, I guess, I mean, Sue would have been close to this as well. Like there weren't a ton of nutrition calculators at that time. You kind of just had to do some of these equations on your own. Yeah. I remember actually doing it with pen and paper for myself. Exactly. So we had to do these back end equations to understand, we had to understand what these things meant. Right. And so I think it's important to understand that these equations, again, they're not magic. It's just taking components of metabolism and certain things that we know are kind of constants and either have low variability or high variability, and we can put them into an equation and kind of spit out a rough estimate based off of, you know, billions of other people that this would probably work well on as well, you know? So that is what this nerdy stuff is all about, you know, and why we went over, took the time to kind of go over that, right? And to the points that both of these guys made, Right. So we talked about, right, your BMR and your TEF are things that are very pretty. They're very fixed, right? They're relatively fixed. But in my opinion, they're pretty damn fixed when we say relative, right? There's not much variance here. It, it may be a percentage point, but when you look at the grand scheme of things, that's that's pretty fixed, right? But when things like exercise related activity and non-exercise related activity, right, that's a big lever that we can pull on. Right. We to really push the needle forward. And also it's a lever that people are pulling on with that they may not understand that they're even pulling on. Mm -hmm. And this is an important point because, you know, the the example that Alex gave with with nurses, right? Physique development works with a ton of nurses. And a lot of these nurses that we've worked with over the past and are currently working with buried themselves in a deficit, right? Buried themselves because they are getting. So they took a calorie calculator and they were like, let's say they did, right? And it gave them this number, right? Let's say it's, or they gave them their uh, maintenance amount of calories that they should probably eat, right? Let's say, let's say it's 1800 to give it a, a number, right? And then based off of a 20% deficit, they buried themselves there. But that was not taking into account their activity in their line of work, right? So not only are they getting 10, 15, 20,000 steps in a shift, they're lifting people up during this shift. They're moving things around, right? And then they're training probably after their shift, before their shift, throughout that week, right? So it's like, there's a lot of, a lot of this stuff that comes into play. And, and this is sort of why we wanted to do this episode to kind of, I don't know, break down the components of what, even what goes into a nutrition calculator, right? Because it may seem like magic or it may seem like that hogwash. each one of these things. Yeah, it's hogwash, right? It's just like, <laughs> Harry, it's Harry Potter stuff, right? Um, so that's essentially why we wanted to go over this today. And this next section that, um, I wanted to kind of go through today was me actually going through our nutrition calculator, right? So we have a nutrition calculator. It'll be in the show notes 
you can tickle the tickle the link in the show notes and it'll take you to a screen that allows you to find your your calories, right? So I did that. I used our nutrition calculator and I'm just going to kind of go through the rough numbers that it spit out for me. And then we're going to kind of go through how you would potentially use these numbers to, you know, maybe create a surplus or a deficit of calories generally to get yourself started, right? I just want to kind of give some context. And then I want these guys to shed some light on, you know, things to add to this um, when it comes to maybe things that we do with our clientele or what we would advise other people to do with this information, okay? So when I took this calculation, right, there's a few things that every calculator is sort of going to ask you, and it's normally these five things. What is your sex? What is your age? What is your scale weight, height, and current activity levels, right? And I know we've talked a lot about current activity levels in this episode, but again, that's a very generalized multiplier in that equation that again gets us close potentially but it doesn't speak for everything right but those are the five things sex age scale weight height current activity levels and so when i put all these things into the calculator it gave me my t d e e my total daily energy expenditure right which we mentioned earlier that's what this equation is ultimately here to do is to give us this number right so my t d e e was 31 100 calories roughly, right? 3,143 calories is what this calculator told me. So basically it tells me generally how much I have to consume to maintain my current weight, right? From this equation, generally I could get close to this number and probably maintain my weight, right? That's kind of what this equation is there for and what that number tells us. Depending on your goals, you're gonna adjust this intake up or down, okay? So let's say my initial goal was to lose weight depending on how aggressive I wanted to be in my calorie deficit, I could reduce calories by 10% maybe, reduce that calorie amount by 15% maybe, or even 20%, right? And you can get more aggressive than that. You can get more moderate than that, whatever. Um, That's not the point of this as much as generalizing kind of what I wanted to do here. So let's say I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive and go with the 20% reduction, right? A 20% calorie deficit from my total daily energy expenditure number, right? This would mean that you would take 20% of that, you know, 3,143 calories, and that would make that total calorie goal roughly 2,500 calories a day. All right. And that's essentially what I would calculate my macros off of, right? And when you get into the calorie calculator, our calorie calculator, it will spit out macros for you as well based off of if if you want high carb or low carb or whatever else, right? Um, So I won't go deep into the weeds on macros because that's not the point of today. But that's generally how you'd start to use that TDEE number, right? And again, if you want to use that calculator for yourself, that's in the description. That's in the show notes. Um, So click that link and you can find your calories in about two minutes. Okay, but I, I want to pass it over to these guys and just see what they have to say um, when it comes to this last bit, my calculations from this nutrition calculator. Yeah, so I know plenty of people are going to use this nutrition calculator or another one, and they are simply going to plug in those five things, sex, age, scale, weight, height, and current activity levels, get that number and go on with their day. They're not going to watch the video that comes along with it. They're not going to listen to the podcast that comes along with it. And that's just something that I have had to learn to let go that you can't just Not everyone is going to get it or not everyone is going to want to spend more time to figure it out. And I get that. I mean, I've been there personally of just wanting someone to tell me what calories I need to intake so I can get to my dream body. But what I would tell you or just hope for you more than anything is that you're able to listen to this podcast or watch the video that goes along with the calculator and truly take inventory of what these metrics mean and get better results for yourself. Like truly, if you take a second and reflect on some of these variables we're talking about and take into consideration all of these metrics, you are going to have better results than the person that just plugs it in, gets the number, and tries to hit that number. Because if you want to see the best results, 
within just using a nutrition calculator and doing all of this on your own, what I would highly advise you to do is go ahead and do the equation. But before following that calorie amount, just tracking your intake. If you aren't already tracking your intake, just do a three to five day dietary recall um, or go ahead and just track your food without trying to hit any goals in my fitness pal and see where your number is at because that's going to give you insight as to, hey, what if I've been maintaining maintaining my weight for six weeks, and I know I've roughly been eating around this intake, then that's going to be, all right, well, this intake, it says that I should be at 1,800 calories, but I've been eating at 1,600 calories and maintaining my weight. If you jump up to 1,800 and say, oh, I was wrong, these are my maintenance calories, you might see the scale weight go up or you might gain weight and then be like, oh my gosh, this calorie calculator was wrong, but more so being able to take into consideration what was going on in your life and where your baseline is. And that's what the whole thing about adaptation that I wanted to talk about and why I mentioned these other factors that affect that out of your hormonal health or chronic dieting or digestive health or sleep or your menstrual cycle health. If those metrics aren't things that you take personally into consideration, then you can't assume that this calorie calculator that's asking you five questions is going to get you those answers. And so if you aren't having a coach and you are just doing something like this calculator, taking different things into consideration is going to be so helpful, especially because looking at this and you think, okay, it says my height and my weight. What is that in the fitness slash health world? That's going to be your BMI. And BMI is something that I personally don't feel like gives an accurate um description of how someone's body is truly built because it doesn't take into consideration how much is fat versus how much is muscle. And even when we look at some of those more complex ways of figuring that out with skin calibers or DEXA scans or bod pods or anything like that, again, that's more steps, more money, all things that we don't always want to do. And I personally, it's not like I regularly take those to know exactly what those numbers are, but more than anything, I'm just kind of giving a disclaimer slash a little asterisk here that this isn't going to perfectly do everything for you. You are going to have to take some responsibility if you do want the best results from this. And that's why we want to provide all these resources so that you truly can take this information and use it and see the best results possible because that's whole that's part of our spiel of train, educate, and empower. And that educate point of wanting you to understand not not just here's what it is, but how did I get there and how can that help me with my health as I move forward in life? Yes. And the a, a, a follow-up to what Austin was speaking to with the deficit that he created, um, I, I want to preface with the aspect of Austin has been tracking his food for a decade now. And so him starting with a more aggressive approach, being at, at 20% or even you know, he could go greater if he wanted to. It's coming from a place of, of greater experience. So if you're an individual who's utilizing the um, calculator and you have not tracked macros a ton or you have not taken yourself into a tracked a caloric deficit ever, I would probably just start with taking in the maintenance calories that it's speaking to. That's going to be probably a better bet for you to get a good baseline rather than immediately jumping into a deficit or immediately jumping into a surplus. Let's get a good baseline of where that intake is at. And I think that's going to be beneficial there. Um, there was a, another thing, but I have a, a side note that uh, I, I wanted to say thank you to Sue for <laughs> continuing to have these education-based podcasts and uh, being two weeks out from her show. <laughs> um, I know that for myself at this point of the game, I would probably not be the most uh, enjoyable to be around, nor would I be uh, in a place to really convey education or recall for things that are coming up throughout the the podcast and those different factors. So for individuals who have been in a prep and been this late in the game, uh, you guys understand the difficulty in which getting on a podcast where you're sharing information or having to have recall would be. So I just wanted to express as we're getting to the tail end of Sue's <laughs> prep here, um, express my gratitude for the the work that she's done on that front. Um, Preach. <laughs> and in that time frame, I still didn't think of the other thing I was going to bring up, but hey, um, it's with the the calculators in and of themselves. The big thing is just treating it as a baseline and putting yourself in a position where you are gaining nutritional knowledge. That's the the biggest thing. And uh, this 
nutrition calculator is going to be really nice for the individuals who are utilizing the physique development training club and utilizing that alongside that because in the training club, the sessions are extremely hard. They're challenging. They are going to put on muscle tissue. They're going to aid you in your fat loss, but you've got to have the nutrition in place as well. So if you're utilizing the, the training club, make sure that if you're not working with a coach for your nutrition or have a good understanding of your nutrition, I would really encourage to utilize the nutrition calculator. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to hire the last coach that I'll ever need, then we cannot wait to get on a phone call with you. There's going to be an inquiry link below in the description box or the show notes. We'll hop on a call, talk about the service and make sure that we get you living the life that you want to. Yeah. And another thing within the app is if you are wanting to, again, maximize your results uh, with the app, I would highly recommend listening to, and we'll have it linked in the show notes and in the description box, our Training 101 series, just so you have a better understanding of, again, the variables that are going into training so that as you're going through it, again, you're getting the best bang for your buck. That's what we want the most for you. And any way that we can provide that, then we're going to go ahead and do that. But I'd love to pass it over to Austin and let people know because I know that the week that this podcast is going live, we have some fun new additions to the app. So Austin, what all is coming new on the app and what can people expect to see? Oh, a lot of stuff. Three-day programs, four-day programs, uh, five-day week programs for all goals, right? So losing body fat, building muscle, gaining strength, and you can perform those workouts at home, or at the gym, right? So when we break all those programs down, there's a total of 360 total programs within this app that are potential for you to dip your toes into, right? Depending on how you answer that initial assessment, right? So when you jump into the app, let's just dive in a little bit. When you jump into the app, you essentially take a, what is now three question assessment that then tells you kind of where to go next. And it actually places it on your calendar immediately, right? So there's no there's no guesswork within this, right? So you go in, you answer those three questions. Um, so the questions you're answering are, what's your goal? Do you wanna lose body fat? Do you wanna gain muscle? Do you want to gain strength? I almost forgot that one. <laughs> Do you want, uh, how many days per week are you training? Three, four, or five days a week at the gym. So you choose that, right? And then are you training at the gym or are you training at home in your little home gym setup, right? And based off of your answers to those questions, that is going to give you, we've already done all the work for you. That is going to put that specific phase, that specific training program on your training calendar. And then you're gonna go through that you just go to your training calendar. You're like, wow, it's already in there. This is, in, this is insane. And then you click it. You go through the whole phase. Let's say it could be two weeks long, three weeks long, four weeks long. They all kind of vary depending on the, the periodization that it's sort of within. But when you get to the end of that training phase, all you have to do is log that last workout. You should log all your workouts, mm-hmm. by the way. But be sure you really, really log that last one, even if you missed a few earlier in that week, because when you log that last workout of the phase, it automatically puts the next phase or training program on your calendar that's going to help you continue to work towards your goal, right? So our, our goal, our goal as physique development is within this time that you spend within our app and as a member of our app, you're working closer and closer and closer and closer to your goal with each and every training phase that you go through, right? And again, complementing that with good quality nutrition that is adequate for recovery and performance, if your goal especially is gaining muscle or strength, and that you have created a deficit if your goal is to reduce your body fat, right? And that all those goals are, are complemented um, within the Training Club app. So these, these are great teammates, to be honest. And I hope today's episode has sort of demystified the back end of tra- uh, nutrition calculators, right? And that's kind of what our program Design 101 series did that'll be linked in the, 
in the show notes, especially on YouTube, if you're watching uh, in the description box below, essentially what we do in these series is just demystify the back end of what's going on, right? Because I think from an outside looking in, you're like, what is this magic? This is voodoo. This is insane. <laughs> I don't understand anything. And so when I'm having to make decisions for myself, now I just ha kind of have to just guess, you know, without fully understanding what's going on in the inner workings or the belly of the beast. But these series are really here to kind of demystify and kind of hold your hand as we both walk through the belly of the beast here and show you around, right? It's kind of like us walking you through the, the museum of the belly of the beast. This is an incredible metaphor. I don't even know where this came from, <laughs> but um, we're, we're sticking to it. So we're gonna walk you through that museum, show you all the photos, all the artifacts, all the nerdy stuff, um, and show you how it works and demystify it. And you know, when you come out the other end, it's gonna be like, hey, that wasn't so confusing, was it? And that's what ultimately this podcast is here for, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. And if you're wondering, the training app is $35 a month and you can cancel at any time, but I have a feeling you won't want to. But we're also offering you a seven-day free trial. If this sounds great and you want to give it a try, then that'll be linked in the show notes or the description box as well so that you're able to try out the app, really see the high-quality training programs, the videos, and everything that we poured into this to make sure that you can get the best results the PD way. So thank you guys so much for joining us in this podcast. We'll catch you in the next one. And don't forget to leave us a review and thumbs up or subscribe if you're on YouTube.